Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I tackle the question of whether the Maru-Q spacecraft can be launched by Starship. And in this case this is a cargo Starship. And even though it sort of has the remnants of the windows up there, uh, it is a big cargo bay. Unfortunately not a big enough cargo bay that I could fit Maru-Q inside. And this is uh, already bigger than I originally made the Starship cargo bay. I've tried to make it as big as possible. But yes, it just doesn't have the space for Maru-Q. Not the width. Uh, we could have tucked the Maru-Q wings in a little bit more and it would have fit the width, but not the length. So I tried. So it can't fit inside, so we're going to have it ride piggyback. And that may throw things off, we'll see. Especially when we go to the vacuum engines only. And uh, I've got sort of a limited gimbal on them so that they can control the craft, but... It's got to be rough with this on top, so that limited gimbal is sort of simulating differential throttle, hopefully they'll have, maybe. Otherwise the RCS will have a lot of work to do. But anyway, we will see what happens. It would be easier for the gimbling on the Starship if Maru-Q was further forward than here. So actually, I'll do that. <laughs> We've got the wings folded anyway, so hopefully the aerodynamics will be alright. So, yeah, there's other uh, issues involved. First of all, uh, once we get into lower orbit, Oh, right, it has to move this way. Oh, gosh. Right, Maru-Q is the root part. So, yeah, once it gets into lower orbit, Starship still has to give it an extra boost in order to get to Mars, because Maru-Q is not going to be able to use its internal fuel. I fully fueled it. Uh, whether that's the most efficient thing or not, I don't know right now. It could be better to have Starship do a little bit more and underfuel Maru-Q a little bit. But we will see. Uh, we are using Raptors as they are right now as far as I know. So this is not the ultimate goal of like Raptor 2 or anything like that. Uh, these are Raptor 2020 versions. And so let's get one of the sea level ones to get the stats. Uh, so I have Raptor Max and Raptor Hypothetical options here, but the stats, as far as I know, the sea level thrust 1914, vacuum 2060, uh, and those are the ISPs that we have here right now. So that is what we are working with. It's a two ton mass for the engine. Uh, I, I've seen all sorts of numbers and people coming up with stuff. These are intended to be conservative. Other things that we might want to tackle. The dry mass of the body of the cargo uh, craft is 85 tons. Uh, th that does not include the finnage mass or the engine mass. So it's more than that. Okay, so yep, with all that being said, let's take it outside. We are at a Mars window. Uh, I don't know whether it's a good Mars window or a bad Mars win window. I just know it's a Mars window. And we'll see where this gets to. Okay, I didn't really intend to launch from pad 39B, but we'll go with it. Uh, we should be all right. Crawl up, SAS on, ignition. And it'll, it'll just start going up because we don't have any launch clamps right now. It was just sitting down there. We do want to reserve fuel for the return of Super Heavy. I think we're going sideways somehow. I'm sure that's not dubious in any way, but anyway, we'll stick with it. Rolling right now is probably not a good idea. Unfortunately, this particular launch opportunity was in the dark, so here we are. And the metallic nature of Starship and Super Heavy means that they are very dark indeed. Maru-Q, on the other hand, is not very metallic. Okay, maybe we can roll. Let's see what a zero roll produces, though. You can see it worryingly maxing out both roll and yaw, though. Let me see what the attitude adjustment time is. We'll cut that down a bit. But yeah, it seems very wiggly like this. Let 
me just try and manually do stuff. Okay, we gotta get ready for booster cutout here. Oh, uh, down, 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 down. Okay. And... That should be 10% of the fuel we launched with. So, okay, separation and ignition. Okay, well, it's using a lot of pitch authority. We'll see how well it handles. Good thing I moved the Maru Q up. Well, I don't know how well we're gonna be able to hold this together. Let me cut out one of the sea level engines to see if that helps. Yeah, I uh, shut down one of the lower sea level engines. It's helping a little bit. Now, of course, as we shut more sea level engines off, we're going to lose some of that gimbling. Let me see if I shut down this Raptor vacuum off the side here, how bad things go. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Okay, um, let's activate that engine again. <laughs> Should have... Oh, we've got the RCS on Q up already. Let's actually shut that off. Just Starship's RCS. Not that we know how strong Starship's RCS really will be, but... Okay, no, we're we're uh, losing the pitch here. Um, let me shut down both lower vacuum engines. So now we're not very efficient at all. But uh, it's sort of more important that we can actually hold ourselves. If I put two Raptor vacuums on top and one on the bottom instead of this arrangement, if I reverse them, that would be better. Okay, I'm gonna try and shut off another sea level, but it's gonna be interesting. Let's see, what does that do? Oh, it's gone off kilter. Alright, uh, uh. No, oh, this is bad. <laughs> Honestly, this is this is not working out very well. Oh, we might not have enough time. We're gonna end up going down again. Hmm. I should I had action group the sea level engines. But I forget if it was toggle or just shut down. Differential throttle technically would not work if there's only one engine. <laughs> Okay, no, uh, this is not good enough. Nah, it's just gonna go worse. Okay, I don't think it's so easy. We'll have to tilt the engines or do something fancy. I'll try it with the engine arrangement reversed with two vacuum on top and one on the bottom and see if that ends up better. This was certainly not good. Okay, all I've done is change the engine arrangement on Starship and we'll see how it goes, but this seems to be a tenuous situation at best right now. I'm not gonna attempt to roll it this time either, because that was very wobbly. Anyway, ignition. It occurred to me that for a Lunar Maru Q, we wouldn't need the bottom tiles, so it'll need a different look. We don't want the black tile look for the Lunar Maru Q. And also we could save some mass. I could probably cut down the mass estimate for Maru Q like that. And again, Maru Q is, I think, 30 tons dry or something along those lines. And when you compare it to the size of Starship, it sort of makes sense. Another option for launching Maru Q was on top of Orion 3, but that would require... Uh, not Orion 3, the Orion carrier plane. But that would require refueling in low Earth orbit. My hope is that launching it on Starship, we won't need to refuel it in low Earth orbit before sending it to Mars, but that's not necessarily the case. It's tough to tell. Uh, there's a lot of variables here. 
including saving fuel for Super Heavy to land, and also when exactly we shut off the sea level engines on Starship. Now of course we could refuel Starship itself in orbit, but then if we're gonna have a refueling launch at all for anything, we might as well just go ahead with the Orion, th uh, Orion carrier plane and refuel Q itself. Or ha attach or send a stage to boost it. Really, we'd be refueling the stage that would be attached to the back of Maruq that would get Maruq into orbit. If we're using the Orion carrier plane version, it would need an extra stage that would help get it to orbit, and it'd be that stage that we refuel and use to transfer to Mars. Okay, reserving that fuel, separation, and ignition. And we'll watch out for how much pitch authority we are using. Oh, I did move Q a little bit higher. There is a limit though, we can't have its decoupler on the cargo bay door. That would not be even remotely legitimate. In other news, I am aware of the Rocket Lab Neutron update, and I had thought about that sort of fairing arrangement, basically the mouth fairing, if you will. That I had thought about even before SpaceX started trying to recover fairings, and but when they started recovering fairings, I really, really thought about this arrangement because I didn't realize how expensive the fairings were until then. So yeah, I will probably make a model of this new Neutron. I am in favor of it in general, but I may also make a bigger one. <laughs> I think I, I think it, the, there deserves to be a bigger one. Okay, we need to shut off the bottom engine, but that's a vacuum engine in this case, so that's a little bit rough. So we have less efficiency now. But it does get our balance right, so that's nice. But yeah, we're running lower ISP than usual. So, yeah. Yep, I'll definitely try to make this. Of course, we have no numbers. We just have uh, animation for it. Uh, this Archimedes engine that Rocket Lab is working on, the numbers seem to be basically the same as my ED4 engine, or close enough. So I'll probably just use the ED4 until we get a good look at the engine. Uh, so I'll make the physical model of the Neutron, but put seven. 84s on the bottom and an 84 vacuum on the upper stage and we will see how that works. That will probably be more efficient than what they have. Okay, we'll try to do sea level engine shutdown. Let me go to the actuation stuff. Okay, we're using full pitch authority there. Um. Okay, let me activate that sea level engine. Hopefully it can help with the gimbling. So one sea level, two vacuums right now. But Starship itself is not ending up with enough Delta V to boost this at all, I don't think. Mato has too much drag with Q hanging out at the top there. Oh, I said there's no payload. There is a payload. Shoot. I must have picked out the payload one instead of the not payload one. Okay, we actually have a payload. So maybe without the payload there'd be more margin. Okay. Seems to be getting pushed down now. Oh, wrong engine. Ah. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm I'm done. <laughs> this is uh, this has not gone well. I I am of the firm belief that, especially because Q can't fit inside Starship, this whole business is a bad idea. So, yep, we have tried the test. It is an experiment, and sometimes your experiments don't go the way you expect, and you learn something. We have learned something. I mean, it could get into orbit, but uh, if I had not accidentally shut off the wrong engine just then. I think it could have gotten to orbit. 
but it can't get to orbit with enough fuel to then transfer to Mars, so there's no point. Yeah, this is just not a very productive arrangement. And we will see about launching Maru-Q on the Orion carrier plane in a subsequent video. That will require a special stage to help boost it to orbit. And then that would require refueling that stage. So I'll see about that. But this is the result of Maru-Q and Starship. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.